just want to give you just a little background on, on why this is so important. First, we hear a lot about, about climate change. Um, there's an article on CNN today, sounding the alarm, world on track to breach a critical warming threshold in the next five years. The last, um, the last UN report that came out a couple months ago was equally alarming. Um, we need to take this very, very seriously. We in New York State passed the CLCPA. Um, we passed my my bill into law uh, that will require all motor vehicles to be zero emissions by 2035. Um, in this year's budget, we started down the road of cap and invest, which is how we'll pay for decarbonization. In fact, some of the types of incentives that you'll be hearing about, um, as, as well as All Electric Buildings Act, um, so there, there are things that we're doing in the state, but there are things that individuals can do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Things like replacing with, with uh, old um, fossil fuel burning infrastructure, boilers, um, with electric heat pumps, with geothermal, um, with, with electric stoves. And, and there are a lot of advantages to that other than climate change. Obviously, we need to do our part and wean ourselves rapidly from fossil fuel. But number two, electric energy is much more efficient than fossil fuel energy, whether it's an automobile or a boiler. Com uh, combusting carbon-based fuel is highly inefficient, and most of it is wasted, and you're paying, paying for that. The other thing is you're reliant on, on the world geopolitical markets. And look what happened when Russia invaded Ukraine, the price of oil skyrocketed. If we're getting our power from clean, renewable energy right here in New York, we're not at the whims of those markets. And finally, there's a health impact. Um, it's, it's, it's just a fact that, that clean appliances and an and a, and a energy efficient home are healthier to live in than one that heats with carbon and cooks with carbon. Um, because of radon, because of particulate matter that causes asthma, uh, heart disease, lung disease, and a whole host of other things. So we're helping the planet. We're going to give you cheaper, more efficient electric bills. And I forgot to mention, we're going to be creating hundreds of thousands of good paying green jobs in the process. And we're going to have healthier communities and healthier households. So that's what we're talking about tonight. And, and what we're really talking about is what are the incentives and how to help you get to that place. And so with that, um, I'll turn it over to Amanda. And Amanda, thank you. And thanks everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Senator Harkam and your entire office. And I'd like to thank you all for being here today. I ask uh, Joe to please share the slides that we've got prepared for you all. Thank you so much. Um, so to start, hello everyone. My name is Amanda Catali. I am the energy advisor for Putnam County with Mid Hudson Regional Clean Energy Hubs. For some context, in 2019, the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act was signed into law. Moving forward, just to save time, I'm going to refer to it as the Climate Act. So uh, it is one of the most ambitious climate laws in the nation with goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions 40% from 1990 levels by 2030 and no less than 85% by 2050. Included in the Climate Act is the criteria that New York State agencies, authorities, and entities invest or direct resources designed to achieve this goal such that disadvantaged communities receive 35% of overall benefits of spending on clean energy programs uh, with the goal of achieving 40%. So what that means for residents of New York is that no matter your income level, there are options for funding both from New York State, as Senator Arkham had mentioned, but also at the federal level with the Inflation Reduction Act. So resources do start with one-on-one -on -one advising uh, with folks like Joe or myself or other energy advisors within the state. Um, and we can move on to the next slide, actually the following slide after that, sorry, that was my introduction. So a little bit more about the Mid-Hudson Regional Energy Hub and what it is that we do. Uh, last December, Governor Kathy Hochul announced $52 million to establish 12 regional clean energy hubs, and we serve as centers of outreach, awareness, and education in support of the Climate Act. In moving towards an equitable clean energy transition, 
the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, which I will refer to as NYSERDA moving forward, uh, partnered with some community-based organizations and in the Mid-Hudson Valley, that was Cornell Cooperative Extension of Dutchess County. Uh, we assigned an energy advisor to every county in the region to meet that goal of 35% with a target of 40% of benefits from clean energy investments to be delivered to disadvantaged communities. Uh, next slide, and I'll turn it over to Joe, please. Thanks, Amanda. Um, so, uh, yeah, Joe Montori here from Sustainable Putnam. I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, our organization. Um, so we were founded in, in 2020, um, and we're, we are all volunteers. We are a tax-exempt 501c3 uh, nonprofit um, incorporated here in New York State and based in, in Mahopac. Um, and, you know, aside from environmental concerns, we're also, we want to make sure that everybody in our community is taken care of as we transition to clean energy uh, and a more resilient community. And so we're doing that by working directly with, with you, with residents, with um, government officials like Senator Harkum, and with our municipal governments here in, in Putnam County. We've you know, established relationships with a, a number of, of other organizations, including Sustainable Westchester, uh, right here with us tonight, Putnam Cap, uh, and a number of our, our towns as well. Um, and then we've got you know, a number of, of different programs other than the ones that we're speaking to you about tonight. Um, we do educational workshops for schools, libraries, um, civic organizations, uh, businesses, et cetera. Um, I'll be speaking quite a bit about the seven steps to clean energy uh, because that pertains to tonight's topic, but we have a number of other projects going on, as you can see from the, the slide there. Um, and I, I just wanted to say, kind of echoing exactly what Senator Harkin was saying, that uh, you know we, we can do this. Um, we know how to do it. Uh, it is about electrifying everything, and as we electrify everything, because that means we're eliminating carbon emissions uh, and other pollutants as well, air pollution, water pollution from fossil fuels, um, we need to clean the grid and stop burning fossil fuels to create that electricity. And the great news is that we have all the technology that we need to make that happen. Um, solar, wind, batteries, et cetera, and software. That's actually really essential in the in the whole transition. Um, and again, um, Senator Harkham stole the words out of my mouth. Why are we doing this? He he actually said this already, but I'll just, you know, let you take a look at that slide again. It's not only going to eliminate carbon emissions, we're going to save money. We're going to make our homes healthier and ourselves healthier in the process. So it's, you know, a win-win-win um, situation. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Amanda to discuss some of the specific New York State programs that are available. Thank you so much. So like Joe said, we have options federally uh, through the state and local government and utility participation is included in this. So there are a lot of ways to maximize incentives, rebates, um, funding for you as well. We could go to the next slide, please. These are some funding options from New York State available. Uh, state programs offer funding for home energy efficiency and clean energy projects, including the Empower New York program, which offers up to $10,000 worth of no cost upgrades for low income community members. And to qualify, you must make 60% or less of the state median income, but we'll go later on into more detail about uh, income eligibilities. Programs uh, the program includes home energy assessment to identify areas uh, in need of improvement, some energy saving tips, installation of high efficiency lighting, attic and wall insulation, water saving shower heads, uh, a new refrigerator if it's deemed necessary by the contractor you work with. And there is also potential funding uh, for heat pump installation with the program. Uh, with assisted home performance, it covers 50% of the costs up to $5,000 for single family homes if you are at the moderate income level, which again, we will go about income eligibility, eligibility later. Um, 
It covers up to $10,000 for two to four family units that have eligible residents living in them and starts with an assessment with a qualified contractor. This program, again, is aimed at moderate income residents that make 80% or less than the area median income, so it's dependent on the county you live in. Uh, Comfort Home offers rebates based on the insulation package that you choose. Again, a contractor that works with the program will come and assess what's best for your home. There's the good, better, or best package, and rebates for them range from $1,000 to $4,000. The good package seals and insulates your attic and rim joist. Better package offers the same, plus insulates walls and floors, and the best package offers all of the above, but retrofit, retrofits windows to Energy Star standards. For the New York State Clean Heat Rebates, this is for air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps, and heat pump hot water heaters. Um, it depends on your utility provider, and we'll get into further detail about the specifics of rebates for that as well. Um, and then there's the New York State, New York Sun program. Again, you must work with a qualified contractor to get the state benefits. Uh, there's a list on the NYSERDA website of qual qualified contractors, and you can get either dollar per watt rebates for solar installation, or there is no cost solar subscription options available to subscribe to a community solar farm and get credits on your utility bill for um, using solar. So we can go to the next slide, please. So this is just a sample of income eligibility for the programs. Lauren, I ask that you put a link to this page in the chat. Again, um, the Comfort Home and Assisted Home Performance with Energy Star are dependent on the area median income. So uh, what's the median income for your county? This example is for Putnam County and for a household of four. So the eligibility levels change depending on the number of people in your household. And Power New York is based on state uh, median income. So you can see here a family of four with the income of 65,820 or less is eligible for the Empower program, which is the cost covered program. Um, but also if you are benefiting from HEAP or SNAP currently, you are automatically eligible for this program. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. So this is just an example of what's offered through the New York State heat, Clean Heat Program through Central Hudson. I know most uh, people who live in Putnam County use Central Hudson or NYSEG as their utilities. Um, so for cold climate air source heat pumps, if you install a full load heat pump, meaning it covers all of your heat needs or air and air needs, air conditioning needs, and decommission your previous fossil fuel heating system, you get $1,000 per 10,000 BTU, British Thermal Units, which is the uh, size of the unit that is installed. So if you need more units installed, say your home has more square feet, um, you get more depending on how big of a, a system you have installed. Um, for uh, If you install the system, but you have an advanced controls put in, to have your old fossil fuel system as a backup, you get up to $700 per 10,000 BTU or per unit that you have installed. And if you do not rem remove your existing system or install integrated controls to automatically turn on your backup system, you get $500 per unit. There's also $200 for partial load heating. For example, if you only use an air source heat pump in one or two rooms of your home. And this is just through Central Hudson. So next slide, please. This also covers uh, ground source or geothermal. If you do a ground source heat pump, it's $2,000 per 10,000 BTU for full load capacity insulation. There's also a $1,000 rebate for the installation of a heat pump hot water heater, and you can mail in your information to get it, or you can actually just get a code on your phone when you go to purchase the uh, system, and you can get it right at, up front at the store. Um, I just need to emphasize that to access the New York State Clean Heat, Heat rebate, you have to work with a qualified contractor who's a part of the program. And to find one of those contractors, you can contact myself or Joe. You can look on your utilities website or speak to somebody in your utility who works as a part of the New York State Clean Heating Program. So next slide. 
This just covers NYSEG, which is very similar to Central Hudson's uh, clean heat rebate, but there's $1,200 as opposed to $1,000 for the full load air source heat pump installation with integrated controls and $1,800, which is more than Central Hudson, for full load and decommissioning your old fossil fuel system. Uh, next slide, please. Again, same as uh, for Central Hudson, $2,000 for the ground source heat pump, a uh, thousand for air source heat pump hot water heater, and it's the same deal. You can uh, mail in your receipt for purchasing a heat pump hot water heater, say from your local Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever you purchase from, and you'll get a rebate check, or you can do it up front and give a code when you purchase. And same thing for NYSEG, you have to find a qualified contractor who works as a part of the program um, to access the rebates. Next slide. Okay, thanks, Amanda. So um, I'm just going to talk for a minute about the Inflation Reduction Act. So this is, you know, the federal portion of the financial incentives. We've been talking about federal, state, and utility incentives. So federally, this law was passed uh, in August of last year. Um, and as the slide indicates, it, it makes hundreds of billions of dollars available, not only for financial relief for uh, households, um, but also to reduce carbon pollution. So it's got a, a dual purpose. Uh, and a great thing about this uh, policy is that, uh, from my perspective, is that um, it provides money not just to people who are income eligible in terms of um, having the tax liability to get those tax credits. Now it's also making money, more money available upfront for people that don't have higher incomes and that kind of tax liability. So that's that's a big plus. There's basically two different categories of funding, and, I, and this is just a little bit abstract, but kind of I think good good to know. Um, you know, a lot of the the funding is is geared towards energy efficiency, and a lot of it is geared towards clean energy supplies. And we've been talking about electrifying and heat pumps and and solar panels and so forth. But energy efficiency is absolutely essential. And that's true not only for the Inflation Reduction Act and that policy, but also for New York's Climate Act as well. Um, in order to make this transition, we've got to reduce the amount of energy we're actually using. Um, otherwise, we'll never be able to you know, put up enough solar panels and, and wind generators uh, to, to make that transition. So the good news is that efficiency is definitely possible. Um, it's not very sexy. It's not like putting solar panels on your roof, but um, it's work that needs to be done. And in fact, it's it's really the priority. <clears throat> uh, and then there's basically three forms of discounts, the upfront discounts, um, like the, the, the rebates when you actually purchase something that are available in some instances, and then the tax credits that are available um, after the fact where you're fronting the money. And then when you do your tax return, you get that that money back. Um, and then there's a third category, home performance-based tax credits. There's um, like a new energy efficient home credit. Uh, and that's really more geared towards people who are building a new home or completely gutting a home. Um, but it is it is actually possible, but it's generally not the, uh, the type of credits that we'll be talking about tonight. I do wanna spend uh, just a minute, a little financial education um, because I used to use the term tax credit and tax deduction interchangeably, and they're not interchangeable. They're actually very different. Um, and the good, uh, more good news, the tax credit, um, I'm just full of good news tonight. The tax credit is way better than the tax deduction. Um, and just a quick comparison here, a $1,000 tax deduction versus a $1,000 tax credit. Um, if you get a $1,000 tax deduction, say for you know charitable contributions or something like, like that, that $1,000 deduction is from your income and the income is what you pay your taxes on, right? So it's reducing how much of your income is being taxed. It's not a dollar for dollar you know, savings. Whereas with a tax credit, if you get a $1,000 tax credit on something, it's actually giving you back $1,000 from the taxes that have been withheld from your income. So it's it's a really significant savings. I think that that's important to be aware of. 
So some of the home improvements that are available, you know, on this list, you know, weatherization basically just refers to insulating and sealing your home from from leaks and drafts uh, to keep the heat in or the cool in in the summertime when you're air conditioning. Um, electrical panel and wiring upgrades. This is new. Um, this has never been done before, but now the federal government through the Inflation Reduction Act is actually going to um, help um, subsidize the changes you'll need to make in order to electrify everything. Not everybody's circuit breaker panel is capable of, you know, adding heat pumps and electric vehicle charger and, uh, you know, an induction stove. Um, so they're actually going to provide some funding for that as well. Um, Energy Star Appliances, as Amanda was referring to earlier in some cases, um, heat pumps, obviously, electric vehicles, and so forth. So a lot of different uh, possibilities available there. So going to turn it back over to Amanda here. Thank you so much. So we're going to take a bit of time now to get into the tedious details about some of the programs rolling out because there's quite a few. So uh, just to jump right into the rebates, the High Efficiency Electric Home Rebate Act, or also referred to as HERA, that's coming out in late 2023, covers project costs for new electric and efficient appliances like heat pumps. 100% uh, of the cost is covered for electrification projects for low-income households. 50% of the cost is covered for moderate-income households. Uh, and the maximum rebate is up to $14,000 with up to $1,750 for heat pump hot water heaters, $850 for heat pump dryers, $8,000 for heat pump for space heating or heat pump systems, uh, $840 for induction stoves, cooktops or ovens, $4,000 for electric load service center upgrades or electrical panels and $1,600 for insulation, air sealing, or ventilation, weather, weatherizing your home, like Joe had said previously, and $2,500 for electrical wiring. So again, it's expected to roll out in late 2023. Um, they said August initially, but we're not certain entirely, but we can give out more information as we get updates on that. Uh, next rebate is the Home Energy Performance-Based Whole House Rebate Program, or HOMES, coming out also late 2023 which is comprehensive home energy retrofits, including up to $4,000 per unit that achieves 35% of savings or $8,000 per unit for low and moderate income households. Now moving into the tax credits, the new energy efficient home credit is Form 45L, offers up to $2,500 in tax credits for single and multifamily new homes built to Energy Star standards, and up to $5,000 for homes certified as DOE ready homes. So the Department of Energy certifies homes if it's so if they're so energy efficient that a renewable energy system offsets most or all of the home's annual energy use. And you can find information, uh, links, resources to find energy ready home builders and certification organizations on the DOE website. Next is the energy efficient home improvement credit, which already rolled out January of this year. It's Form 25C. We've been talking a lot about it in previous presentations. It offers a tax credit up to 30% of energy upgrade efficiency upgrade costs with a cap of $600 per improvement, but there's some exceptions, including heat pumps that have a $2,000 cap, uh, heat pump hot water heaters that also have a $2,000 cap, and a home energy audit has a $150 cap. So again, this is tax credits. Uh, the Residential Clean Energy Credit gives credit for residential properties that covers up to 30% the cost of installation of solar arrays, microgrid controls, geothermal or biomass technologies, and standalone battery storage systems with a capacity greater than three kilowatt hours. The Energy Credit is a credit to commercial solar systems with a base of 6%, but there's a bonus credit of 30% depending on prevailing wage and apprenticeship requirements. There's also additional credits available, 10% um, to if spe specific domestic content requirements are met and 10% bonus for energy communities, also a 10 to 20% additional credit if it's in a low income community. And all of these programs are uh, rolled out in January, 2023. So they're already available. Next page, please. 
Uh, so there's just some additional funding. Um, the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund is funding to the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA for programs. Uh, $27 billion are available for the EPA, of which $8 billion must be allocated in project to projects in disadvantaged communities. The Climate Pollution Reduction Grants are competitive grants for states, cities, or tribes to implement air pollution reduction plans. The Environmental and Climate Justice Block Grants are offering more support for disadvantaged, disadvantaged communities. And there will be more grant and loan programs offered, but the rollout dates are to be determined. So these are all estimated or already rolled out, but there's more coming, just TBD. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it back to Joe. Thanks. So um, we're going to talk you know, more about some of the details, including like how to go about this and, and how to organize your, your projects, your home improvement projects. Uh, and I'm going to give a shout out to a colleague of mine, Marcy Cleveland of Green Building Specialists, who coined this acronym AWE, Assess, Weatherize, Electrify, <clears throat> excuse me. That's the that's the basic order of operations for for all of this work. Um, uh, she's very keen on the idea, and I agree with her that you really need to assess your home first before you uh, electrify it, and you assess it to see how much energy are you using and how much of that is is really being wasted. Uh, and then once you determine that, and you do that through an energy audit, once you determine that, then you take the steps to plug those leaks save that energy, get more efficient, and then electrify. Now that's that's the general rule, right? But the reality is, is that, you know, the world is not perfect and your boiler might, you know, or your air conditioning unit more likely uh, as summer, you know, approaches uh, might might go. And so you're gonna need to, to change something about your, your HVAC system first uh, in that case. But as a general rule, it does make sense to assess first. And so we highly recommend uh, getting um, a complete energy audit. You can get a subsidized audit. Um, a lot of auditors are now, you know, um, they'll do the, the basic audit, but in order to get the complete audit, you might have to pay extra. It might be two or $300, but it's well worth it because when they do that, they'll use, you know, a heat, heat loss thermography camera to take pictures like the one on the screen there, but they'll be doing it from inside your home of the walls, the, the window frames, the door frames and so forth to detect exactly where the heat loss is occurring uh, and where the leaks are occurring. And they'll often simultaneously do a blower door test, which again, highly recommended, where they basically close all the windows and doors in your home except one. And in that door, they install a fan, <clears throat> close off the rest of the, the door, and suck the air out of your house and measure how many cubic feet are being drawn out of your house over time. And that gives them a, a number that tells them exactly how leaky your home is and a baseline from which to work. And then they'll um, you know, write up a full report, making recommendations in terms of you know, what ceiling should be done um, and uh, you know, what insulation work needs to be done. You don't have to do any of that work. You're under no obligation to do it. And if you do choose to do it, you don't even have to use that contractor who did the audit. You can go out and get other estimates, and I, and I suggest you do, um, and then make your own decision. And you know you can choose to do some or all of the work or none of the work that's recommended. That's entirely up to you. But you know, for a few hundred dollars, it's it's really a, a great investment. So on our Sustainable Putnam website, we have what we call the Seven Steps to Clean Energy Program. Um, and it is, you know, obviously uh, there's seven steps there. Um, and we're mostly talking about three through seven today. But step one is super easy to do. Select a clean, renewable source of energy. Um, and that could be an ESCO. It could be maybe you're already enrolled in community choice aggregation. Whether you are or not in an ESCO or uh, you're using the standard, you know, power supplied by your utility, you can also enroll for community solar, which most community solar programs will, will give you a discount of 10% at no cost to you. Um, I'm not going to go into 
you know, the, the details of Community Solar tonight, but you can go to our website to learn more about it. Um, it's foolproof. Uh, there's no there's no catch. It sounds too good to be true, but it's a New York State program that uh, is basically encouraging the building of solar farms in New York State within your utility territory, your utilities territory. And in exchange uh, for putting that electricity into the grid, um, the uh, utility or the community solar provider rather is giving you a 10% discount on that electricity. Um, and not switching to LED light bulbs reduces your lighting uh, energy demand by 90% if you're used, still using incandescent light bulbs. Um, new LEDs come in all kinds of warmths uh, and uh, coolness uh, in terms of color. Um, so they're, they're really improved them a lot. I, some of the earlier you know, uh, bulbs tended to give a greenish hue uh, and so forth, but you can buy any type of bulb now to replace your incandescent uh, and it, it can match it uh, in, in the quality of light. Um, so anyway, um, again, this is kind of the order of operations, generally speaking, ideally in the ideal world. But again, you know, if your car breaks down tomorrow, maybe you want to think about buying an EV, even though that's what do we have step number five here on the list. But in terms of the financial return, this is the order to, to proceed in. And again, this is available on our, our website. Also available on the same page on our website is what we call our online toolkit. Um, I, I'm just going to mention the carbon calculator. You can kind of create a baseline for the carbon emissions that your household is producing uh, and then watch it decrease. You can use the calculator again after you do one of these projects, uh, or you can even kind of, you know, hypothesize if I do this project, how much will it reduce my, my carbon emissions? It's kind of an interesting tool. And of course, as they say, what gets measured gets done. Um, solar, our solar decision tree helps you to decide whether community solar or a solar installation makes the most sense for you and your household. It's just a series of questions that kind of directs you, uh, based on your responses, directs you to one or the other choice. And then we also have yeah, a, a number of other things. I'll, I'll actually show you a separate slide. So this is just like a little replica of one of our clean energy planning worksheets. It's basically, you know, like a sheet to with links on it to help you do more research and take some notes so that you can make decisions in advance of an emergency situation where, you know, your boiler goes uh, on a sub freezing day in January and you don't know what to do about it. If you complete the planning worksheet in advance, you know, you know, you've already gotten estimates and so forth, and you've got a good idea of who you're going to call um, before that disaster happens. Um, same thing with you know, appliances, um, electric cars, and so forth. We've got a planning worksheet for each of those. And again, I'm going to send this to everybody um, who's registered for the, uh, for the workshop tonight, um, but it is also available on our, on our website. And then we have um, this one page financial incentive overview. I call it the financial incentive guide. Um, and it combines all of the incentives that we're referring to on one page. Um, now it's obviously not very complete uh, and it's not completely, it's not gonna answer all your questions certainly, but it, it'll give you an idea of what's available for each project that you are and you know that you're planning. On doing so, if you're weatherizing, you know you look for weatherizing in the uh, left-hand yellow column, um, and then you just work your way across, and you can see which incentives are available. The green columns are the upfront discounts, and the blue columns are the kind of post-purchase tax credits and and rebates and so forth. Again, not complete, um, and it's the maximum um, available. Uh, incentives. So you might not qualify for all of that money, but again, it'll give you a ballpark figure. Similarly, uh, in fact, we created the, the our guide based on rewiring America's savings calculator. It's an online calculator where you plug in your zip code, number of people in your household, or your income, I believe, 
uh, and it tells you on the federal level only what's available. And it's it's really amazing uh, tool, and it'll show you what's available for every one of the different projects that you might be considering. Uh, and again, we'll send you a link to that as well. I want to take a minute just to suggest that you think about staggering your projects rather than, uh, for example, with heat pumps, doing your whole house. That might make sense financially and uh, in terms of managing your projects. Um, but it is possible sometimes to perhaps get more um, of a tax credit or a, a rebate if you stagger the projects. So for example, with heat pumps, because the tax credit is a maximum of $2,000 per year, uh, if you stagger them, you can collect 2,000 in this example in 2023, another 2,000 in 2024, and another 2,000 in 2025. On the other hand, um, it's complicated. On the other hand, you've got to weigh that against the tax credit that Amanda was speaking about earlier for the whole home heating rebate that you could be eligible for. Um, that might outweigh the benefit of getting the additional federal tax credits, or maybe you don't qualify for the federal tax credit and it's not an issue. So anyway, your, your, your circumstances may vary, but it's something to think about. And that's, you know, before we get to our questions and answers, we're just about done, but I just want to mention that, uh, you know, Amanda and I, and, and if you live in Westchester, Lauren are available to speak to you wherever you live in, in New York State, there is an energy advisor available to you. Uh, and in my case, you can schedule a consultation with me online. Um, I've got my, you know, this set up uh, so that, you know, my calendar is available there. And um, by telephone or Zoom, whatever you prefer, I'll send you a, a pre-consultation questionnaire so that I have some background info about your home. Uh, and you know how it operates, how it's heated, how it's cooled, how it's powered, and so forth. Uh, and then after our conversation, I'll send you um, a little report uh, with some recommendations and, and probably some links for more information and more, more research for you to do. And Thank you. Um, and I just would like to reiterate that uh, it all starts with meeting with us one on one, having a conversation with us one on one. A lot of people have uh, very specific questions about their home projects, and it's hard to answer uh, in detail about things like that when we're, you know, discussing with a bunch of people at once. So we can give you general information, but the really good guidance comes from making an appointment with one of us and. Uh, Joe and I both do one-on-one -on -one advising. Lauren does in Westchester as well. Um, that QR code that you see right now will actually take you to the Mid-Hudson Energy Choices page, which gives you information about the entire region, Mid-Hudson Valley region's hub. So if you're in any other county in the region, you can find your energy advisor there. If you'd like to speak with me, and I recommend Joe and I both could do this, but um, if you're working with one of the state programs, I recommend uh, contacting me just because we work with alongside NYSERDA on the hub, so I can sort of guide you through uh, your application, any questions you have about sort of the tedious details about these programs, uh, things like that. And my contact information is there. But again, uh, if you're in Westchester, Lauren is an energy advisor, and you can find the other ones through the QR code there. I agree with Amanda. I recommend you contact her about the state programs as well. They are extremely complicated and she is an expert. So I'm going to stop sharing our screen and I guess we can move into Q&A. And uh, Lauren, do you want to? Yeah, absolutely. So we got uh, two live questions. Uh, oh, no, three. Um, so one, I uh, provided an answer to in the chat, but it was uh, a attendee talking about um, solar for all and how they don't qualify as a, a middle class citizen. So, uh, you know, learning about, you know, what options would there be for, you know, other income brackets as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um... I, I could take that first question about the recommended time of year. Um, that, that's a great question. Um, there, there isn't a particular time of year, um, but 
I, I would say that you want you would want the I mean the auditor can tell you better than I could. Um, I'm not a professional auditor, but I, I think they what they will look, tell you is that you want there to be a difference, a differential between the indoor and outdoor temperature, whether that's hot or cold, um, so that they can detect the heat loss. If if the indoor temperature is the same as the outdoor temperature, they're not really going to notice any difference, right? So you want a, you want a difference. That, that's a great question, by the way. Um, that's that's something that I you know learned as I I went, you know, as I did this these projects myself. I actually forget to, forgot to mention that, and I'll just kind of interject right now before we get to the next question. Um, I've done all of these projects in my home. Um, my house is fully electric. Um, yeah, I've even you know replaced my vehicles with electric vehicles, and um, you know a lot of a lot of people say, well, didn't your electric bill go up? Yes, it did, um, but I don't pay anything for gasoline anymore. Um, I'm saving thousands of dollars a year in, in gasoline costs. And because I insulated my home and sealed it, I got the audit. I did it first. I did it in that order. I'm actually using, and now that I've switched to heat pumps, I'm using less electricity than I was before I started any of this. So I'm, you know, although electricity costs have gone up, I'm still paying less for energy than I was when you combine the gasoline, the propane I was burning, uh, and the my high, higher electric costs before I made my house more efficient, um, I'm saving money as well. <clears throat> um, next question I could also answer, no, there's no fee for the consultations. Um, Amanda's services are for free. My services, Sustainable Putnam services are for free as well. Um, Amanda, I'm not sure if you had anything that uh, you wanted to talk about with those questions that were answered as well, or if we can move no, on. No, I to think those list. are great answers. Yeah, we can move on. Great. Wonderful. Okay. So um, the next question that I see is, uh, what's the work planned in strengthening slash upgrading the electric grid in order to handle the greater need as electrification expands across the state? Great question. Um <clears throat> Uh, uh, well, there's a couple of things that are happening. One is getting more efficient so that, you know, although demand will go up for the things that we're, we were using fossil fuels for, uh, as we get more efficient, that'll actually decrease demand. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, that, that'll help it to some extent. Another thing that'll help is that um, right now, people turn things on and off and leave them on even when they don't need them. Uh, in the future, you know, we're going to have a much smarter grid. Uh, and there's a lot of ways in which software will be used to kind of moderate uh, when, exactly when things are happening. So for example, um, I could plug in my car now and, and have it start charging. But in the future, it will be able, and there's already this is already happening on an experimental basis your car and the grid will talk to one another uh, and the grid will tell your car, you know, no, don't charge now because you're not going anywhere until tomorrow morning. So, um, and you can program your car to, to let it know this, uh, what your schedule is. Um, so we're not going to charge it now. We're going to charge it, you know, after midnight or, you know, whenever, and it'll be, it'll still be fully charged in the morning or power could be taken from your car and you'll get paid for that electricity, and it'll go into the grid to feed higher demand during a, a you know peak hour of the day, for example. Uh, and then you'll charge your car when during an off-peak period, and it'll all happen automatically. You won't even have to think about it. So that's my response. I don't know if Amanda or Lauren, if you have anything to add. I would uh, just like to add a little bit of clarification on what we mean when we say uh, efficiency. We mean that it requires less energy to do the same amount of work. So when we say switch to LED light bulbs, which I think is a great example, it means that the same amount of energy going to an LED light bulb will will do or it will require less energy to light the same amount of space. It, it consumes less energy if we're switching to energy efficient appliances. So. Um, 
that's why we expect it to, and, and it does lower your utility bill because it does the same amount of work, but consumes less energy. Thank you. Yeah, good point. Okay, so um, moving on, we have a question about the federal tax credit. Uh, so in regards to the federal tax credit, are you eligible if you finance your heat pump installation? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I should, if there's more to say about it. Uh, as long as you get the work done, you are eligible. Uh, the only thing I know that is not eligible is, uh, I believe, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody else on this, leasing solar panels. If you I, lease, I believe that's correct. Yeah. Right. But if you're financing, then you're still purchasing. So uh, it is eligible for tax credits. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and I see that Joe is typing a response to how to sign up for a consultation on the Sustainable Putnam website, so that will be answered shortly. Um, and then we have another question. Uh, does having a Medicaid-eligible member of your house impact eligibility for income-based subsidies slash rebates slash incentives? Uh, yes, since Medicaid is uh, income-based. Uh, that would qualify you for some of the income-based programs, you would just need to give proof of uh, receiving that benefit. Yeah, I would just add as well with um, the Empower with the Empower program, um, it, multiple forms of government assistance uh, can be a pre-qualifier um, for the program. So it's not just the ones that were listed before, but um, you know, there could be other options as well. It's, you know, demonstrating income would be uh, the best way to do it. Um, Joe, do you have anything to add on to that? I do not. <laughs> I know that was a great answer. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, we have another question. Um, with the NYSERDA rebates through our local utility company, NYSEG, uh, what happens if the utility provider rejects or refuses to pay the recommended contractor's rebate amount? What is the recourse? Um. I don't know that I've ever actually seen this unless you have worked with a contractor that is not qualified for the program. So that is why I emphasized earlier, a lot of people have asked if they can get the rebate when they had heat pumps installed, but you can't get the state rebate if you've not worked with a contractor who is a part of the program. So um, if there are issues with uh, the contractor receiving the rebate when they are certified for the program, I would reach out to myself or the utility um, company. Yeah, and I would add for the energy advisors as well, we specifically work with the nice sort of rebates and, you know, work with the programs and track these projects as well. So if you're ever having any trouble, you know, Amanda is a great resource to reach out to for the Putnam area. So, yeah. Um, I have one that just says, I will be contacting Amanda. Thank you. Um, so that's great to hear. We love to hear that. Another one that's just thanks. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, another question. Uh, do you also have information about incentives related to installing wood or pellet stoves? Hmm. I, I do not. I, uh, this is, so I know that there, for the, some of the IRA programs, there is, uh, I don't know if it's a rebate or a tax credit for appropriately efficient biomass, um, but there are specifications about, it has to be a certain level of efficiency. And again, these are very new programs. So um, it, it would have to be, we'd have to get the details when it's rolled out. Yeah, I know um, for the um, Inflation Reduction Act, for the point of sale rebates that are launching later this year, those are mainly electric or induction stoves, I believe. Um, so, you know, not sure what there is for the, the wood or pellet, though. Okay. Um, and then we have another question. Um, are there any side effects for humans when using LED bulbs? Uh, my adult children still live with me. Um, and it looks like there's a follow-up question as well related to uh, how you calculate total annual income for uh, program eligibility. So I guess that's kind of a two-part. I'm not sure how you both yeah. want to take that. Um, well, regarding LED light bulbs, I'll take that 
that one. <laughs> I think that's that's pretty straightforward. I've never heard of any side effects from from LED bulbs. Um, Amanda or Lauren, have you? No. Okay. So I think that's that's pretty straightforward. And I, and I guess the next question, Amanda, you're probably the person to answer this one. Uh, are the adult children's incomes included in the total yearly income for that household? Uh, yes. So it is total for the household. It is, um, yes, every, every income in the household would be included in the calculation for that. Yeah, and uh, it does adjust by household size as well. So just make sure that um, it includes not just, um, you know, uh, income earners, but includes anyone living in the house. So children as well would be included in those. Um, okay, uh, we have a question. Uh, Hi, I signed up for Clean Choice Energy to lower my Con Ed bill. It has no positive impact on saving money. Do I have any recourse or alternative? Um, so Clean Choice Energy is an ESCO, an energy supply company. And I actually also uh, used them years ago, uh, among others. And my experience with ESCOs, uh, my personal experience, um, was that I would get a great rate originally and uh, maybe a one-year contract. And then after a year, the rate would go up and it the rate would go up you know, and I wouldn't be paying attention and then I'd get a, a large electric bill. So I kind of gave up on ESCOs. Again, I'm not advising you, you don't use ESCOs or do use, but I just found it too frustrating and difficult to keep track of. Um, I think the, personally, I think the best alternative is community solar because it's for the life of the solar farm. So say 20 years or more, you're guaranteed a 10% discount on whatever you're paying for electricity. So if you're using your utilities, you know, standard electric supply, you get a 10% discount off of that. If you're using an ESCO, you get a 10% discount off of that. Um, you really can't beat it. Um, it's, you know, there, it's kind of a no brainer, I, I, I say. Um, and yeah, I, that, I, I would go with community solar personally. I'll add to that too. I I am a renter, so I cannot install solar panels at my home. And I subscribe to a community solar farm, and it is uh, very easy. There's no upfront cost. It does reduce your utility bills, um, and it's good for why you can't have solar on your home. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so. We have another question about, um, oh, I see that Joe already answered it, but for well, folks just, that just, uh, don't have the Q&A open, uh, someone was asking if the presentation will be available on YouTube, and uh, Joe has said that, yes, uh, a link will be sent out uh, to all the registrants and participants on this call. Lauren, we have questions that were submitted in advance. Mm -hmm. I think some of them we've actually answered already in the presentation and so forth, but maybe we could just look through there and... Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have one here about, let me take a look. Um, so we've answered questions about um, funding sources and uh, subsidies for the installation of solar and heat pumps. But if you ever need anything you know, reiterated or you're looking for information for your project, um, you can reach out to your energy advisor or to Sustainable Putnam for additional information. So, you know, it doesn't have to end on this call. Um, I also see that there is a question about uh, funding opportunities for a single mother of adult children and what the maximum household income level allowed is for the programs. I know we did uh, talk about this earlier, but it's never, it's, it's a little difficult to understand and also difficult to keep up with because it's based on where some of the programs, depending on which one you're interested in, are based on where you live, what county your area median income is, or the state median income if you're interested in power, uh, the total income in your home, but also how many people live in your home. So for a single parent with adult children, uh, your children do 
count as residents in your home, but all of the income does as well. So I know Lauren had included in the chat earlier the link to the eligibility page, but we can throw that in there one more time. And you can reach out to me if you want specifics, but uh, it does depend on how many people are in your home and the income based on that. Yeah, and again, reaching out to an energy advisor is the best way to probably get a better answer because then you can, you know, state how many people live in your home and go through, you know, how to figure out income eligibility. So if you ever have any follow-up questions, um, it's a good resource to turn to. Um, so there is another question about how to fund uh, necessary pre-electrification repairs in LMI homes. There is no current funding to address this need. Um, I assume that would be decommissioning, you know, old uh, oil or gas uh, systems. So, Joe or Amanda, if you would like to take that one. Yeah, um, pre-electrification hmm, could be a number of different things. Like Lauren said, it could be um, decommissioning an old system. It could also be weatherizing your home. So there are there is the empower or assisted home performance. Um, there is currently OTADA, so the Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance, is funding heat pump installations for low-income homes, but it is not released yet. So it's sort of in limbo right now, but it will be available to people who are HEAP recipients, uh, the Home Energy Assistance Program recipients. Um, and yeah, pre-electrification could be weatherizing, which again, empower assisted home performance or comfort home if you aren't eligible for either of those. Um, yeah. Joe, anything to add? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was looking at the next, uh, another question that was mm -hmm. just submitted um, regarding heat pumps manufactured in 2015. Does this still have value in comparison to the newer ones? Uh, I don't think we have enough information to answer that. I, you know, we need to really see the specifics uh, on that particular heat pump. Um, but I think, I believe in 2015 that, you know, cold climate heat pumps were being produced. And I don't see a reason why it, it might not be, you know, a, a, a good one. But I, I, while we're talking about it, you do want to make sure that it is a cold climate heat pump. Um, heat pumps have been made for decades and decades and installed in Florida where temperatures don't get very low. But cold climate heat pumps are designed to go, to work, to continue to work effectively at below zero temperatures. Um, I've had heat pumps in my home for, uh, this was our fourth winter and this was a pretty mild winter except for that one subarctic blast we got but I've never had to use any kind of auxiliary heating system, um, you know, to stay warm. Uh, in fact, my house is more comfortable now with the heat pump mini splits than it was with my baseboard heating uh, in the past, which was tended to be kind of uneven. Um, so, yeah. Um, there was one other question that I'll, if you, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, yeah, sorry. I was just want... mentioning in regard to that question, um, Amanda has uh, forwarded a link to me that I'm now sending in the chat as well uh, for a list of cold climate heat pump models, right. uh, which you could check your model there and see uh, oh, if it would be you know, eligible. And right. just to mention as well that uh, the cold climate one uh, models are the ones that, um, or at least for air source heat pumps, uh, are eligible for the tax credits and rebates. So that would be another reason to double check that uh, you would have a cold climate model. Great, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions about converting from oil to heat pumps and and the cost involved and, and so forth. And it it is a big upfront cost. There's no doubt about it. Um, th that's why these financial incentives are, are being offered. Um, and somebody asked about, you know, the best time to, to do it. And, you know, the, the best time is when it's just about broken, but, uh, from a financial, purely financial perspective, but you never know when that's going to be. So uh, I, I would ask if you have a service contract for your boiler or your furnace, I would ask them how much, how many years do I have left to this? Or do I have a year left? 
Uh, and, and, you know, if it's, it's within a couple of years, I think it makes more sense to do it when it's not broken uh, and you have the time to get it installed and shop around and, you know, update any uh, estimates that you've gotten and, uh, and, and do it then. Um, and another consideration is how much are you paying now to heat your home, right? I mean, it, get, it can get to a point where even if the system is still working adequately, but you're, you're paying through the nose for oil to heat your home, then maybe it does make sense to switch now. Again, with the proviso that you, you know, assess and weatherize first, uh, because that will um, alter how large a system you install and therefore how much money you're spending on that system. Um, so you can save money by buying, you know, um, in effect, um, smaller heat pumps uh, that uh, aren't, you know, designed to heat a smaller, more efficient space or a larger, but more efficient space. Does that make sense? Okay. I think so. Makes sense to me. <laughs> um, I also saw that one of the questions sent in was about, um, you know, the documentation that might be needed for some of these uh, rebates and also for the tax credits as well. So, Amanda, maybe you want to take us through um, what's needed with regards to the NYSERDA programs for home energy efficiency? Sure. Um, so a lot of the NYSERDA programs that are based on income eligibility do require proof of income. Um, but if you are benefiting from another program, such as HEAP, SNAP, Medicaid, something like that, that is that you already proved your income eligibility, uh, you can send your uh certificate your proof that you are benefiting from that program um and then for other rebates like things like new york state clean heat as long as you work with a contractor who is a part of the program they take care of that for you they make sure because they benefit from it as well they get a, a rebate as well so um as long as you're working with somebody who's aware of the program they can work with you uh on making sure that you get that anything else to add uh, Joe, I don't know if you have any intel about tax credit wise, what's needed for documentation purposes. I'm not personally familiar, but. Um, you know, you really only have to um, put down on, there's a special form, of course, there's always a special form with the IRS, there's a special form. Um, and you, you basically just put in, you know, the information about your purchase uh, or your expense rather, you know, how much you spent uh, and you have to answer a few questions. It's actually very straightforward. Now, I would assume that, you know, in the unlikely event that you are audited, you would need, you know, some further documentation, but that's not required to be submitted to the IRS. At least it, it, ha it hasn't been as of 2021 or 2022, I should say. Sorry, I keep sending everything to Lauren because I don't think I can send to everybody. But oh, um, um, NYSEG does have a document for clean heat contractors, but I've used it a lot specifically because it's very helpful in knowing what you need to have to get the tax credit for a heat pump installation. And uh, the document's on the website and Lauren just shared with everybody. It's pretty simple as long as your contractor gives you... Uh, Let's see, air source heat pump model number, the AHRI reference number, and your customer invoice. Yeah, and if any of this is confusing or jargon heavy to you, talk to your contractor and also talk to your accountant if um, you do have one, as they can probably give you a better idea of um, tax eligibility and all that. Yes, for sure. Okay, um, we have another one that just came in. Uh, it seems like it's someone whose heat uh, went out in March, um, but uh, a new system will be needed before the cold returns. Um, so they're looking for recommendations on how to find, you know, trustworthy contractors, it seems like. Uh, work with an energy advisor or with Joe, because we will get you the rebates through the state and uh, the contractors that work with the state programs are, are certified through NYSERDA. So 
um, yeah, they are, they are held accountable. They're contractors that have had to, uh, be approved by the state. So, um, yeah. Anybody else have anything to add? Well, just that if it, I mean, if it's 400 to 500% what it should be, yeah, then I would definitely, you know, get other estimates, uh, I'm I'm not really sure what current prices are, you know, given inflation. Uh, I'm sure it's higher than what I paid four years ago. Um, I just uh, did some house painting, and I was a little a little taken aback by the price of a gallon of paint <laughs> myself. Yeah, and again, I would just say this is the importance of working with participating installers as well, because. They're incentivized to offer, you know, certain prices because of the incentives that can be applied to the project as well. Um, and, you know, you have your energy advisor or you have sustainable Putnam on hand to, you know, walk you through the process as well. Yeah. And we can't emphasize enough shopping around a bit, getting quotes from a few different people and seeing who you trust the most and, you know, coming back to us with your feedback and we can sort of support you along the way with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going to take another browse through some of the questions that were submitted beforehand. Uh, most of them seem to be stuff that was answered about solar um, incentives that were available. Um, there is a question about electric panels, which I don't recall if we touched on um, electric panel rebates. Um, and how those are incorporated. Um, I know there's some tax credits available, but Amanda, Joe, I don't know if you wanted to say anything first. Um, well, for electric panel upgrades, I believe there's a maximum of $4,000 available upfront if you're, if you're income eligible. And on the tax credit side, it's 30% up to uh, $600. Yes, and I know correct. for, yeah, and I know for <laughs> the, no, it's all good. And I know for the uh, $600 tax credit that uh, the electric panel would be have to be uh, done in conjunction with a uh, qualifying upgrade. So that would be, you know, a heat pump or solar or um, a heat pump hot water heater as well. So if you're doing it, it would just have to be something where there clearly is a need for increased electrification. You're not just upgrading your electric panel for the heck of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. Um, I feel like we've answered a lot of the questions. There's been a lot of uh, recurring ones about, uh, you know, how to uh, find good contractors and everything and, uh, you know, rebate options. So I feel like we've we've covered yeah. the ground there, hopefully. I think, I think so too. I, I've been taking a look through as well. Thank you very much for, for assisting with all this work. Anytime. Anytime, of course. Right. So I think uh, maybe we're ready to wrap up. Again, we're going to, um, you know, share the recording. We're going to... Um, share all these links and, and, and resources with, with everybody by, by email. Um, so I um, just want to thank uh, Victoria for, for all of your assistance for organizing this event for us. And, and of course, to Senator Harcum uh, for uh, his willingness to, uh, to host it. Of course, and, and thank you all so much for putting on this amazing presentation. For our constituents, I know it's very appreciated. Thank you.